Google Camera is a free app for Android smartphones with a ton of different builds, but unfortunately doesn't work perfectly well on all the devices. But if you do find a working version for your particular smartphone, you can get some great results with it. What's good guys, my name is Oleg Nikitin and you're watching No Limits On channel. So today we'll be comparing the stock camera app of OnePlus 7 Pro. Yeah, it's an old phone, but can we squeeze out something more than the stock camera? So we'll be working with Google Camera app by BSG. The version is written on the screen and I'll leave a link down below so you can download it yourself. And also I'll leave a link to the website where you can find different versions for different smartphones. Google Camera is basically what Google Pixel smartphones are using and it's mainly focused on post-processing algorithms that make Google Pixel phones stand out in terms of cameras in a good way. But also you can apply similar post-processing to your other Android devices to get better results. In this video we'll be comparing the standard camera app of OnePlus 7 Pro and the Google Cam app and next week I'll post a comparison of Google Cam versus iPhone 13 Pro Max stock camera app. So stay tuned for that. Almost all the shots are made with the main camera module since Google Cam only supports the main camera and also it has digital 2x crop. And one more important thing is that you can shoot both JPEGs and RAWs simultaneously with Google Camera and play around with RAW photos in post a lot. So I've uploaded both JPEGs and RAWs to a cloud service, the link is down below, so you can edit those by yourself and choose the best workflow for you. Whether it's a pre-edited Google Cam pictures or RAWs that you have worked with yourself. So now it's time for a side-by-side -side comparison. So guys, the stock app is at the left and the Google Camera app is at the right. The first thing I notice is the saturation and the tint of the sky. On the stock app we see it's much more saturated, as well as the red color right here. And overall I do prefer the Google Picture, uh, I mean the Google Cam, because it's more natural. And also I do like that we can see a bit more detail in the shadows in this area. And here we can see some crushed shadows as well as here while we are maintaining the data right there. Now let's zoom in four times and let's have a look at detail levels and also the sharpness. To be honest, I do like the sharpness more. We can uh, read this text and it's more soft right here. And also the texture of this uh, tower is better, I think, on the Google Cam app. But I see this little spot, it's kind of smeary and smashy. And here it's all good, so probably it was some bug of the app but overall pretty comparable results to be honest. In this shot we see some difference in the sky once again, it's more saturated on the left and more pale on the right, but also I can see that we have a different green color, it's a bit more towards yellow on the stock camera app and more true to life on the right one, but those are minor differences. Let's zoom in and we can see the amount of sharpening and I can say that it has more digital sharpening on the left picture with the stock camera app and a bit more pleasing to the eye, less over sharpened look of this uh, part of the building. And also we can see that this part is blown away, of course it's very bright, but here we can see some more detail right there. Now we're switched to the portrait mode and I can say that the stock camera app is doing much better job. First we can see much more um, blur, of course, here we can see that it's almost not blurry, uh, if it was shot on f, I don't know, 8 probably, <laughs> or f5.6, and it's looking like f2 probably. And also the separation is much better, the glasses, the hair, everything is much better separated. Let's have a look at the next picture, which is zoomed in, and I'll tell you why. You can see right here. We have some spots of not blurry parts right there, right here, and the parts uh, of the glasses are kind of blurry. Here we also do get a little bit of blur right there and a little bit of not blurry parts right here, but overall this picture is much better. It's sharper, it's, um, you know, it's better in terms of separation, so good job for the main camera. In this shot I can see a bit more contrast right here on this picture, and I can see that the clouds and the sky itself has a bit different tint. Zooming in, I don't see a dramatic difference, probably it's looking a bit sharper on the Google Cam, but probably it's because of more contrast. In this particular shot, I do like the green color of the skyscraper more, it's looking a bit different than this color, and on this picture those two colors are almost the same, 
the difference is really negligible. So now let's jump in indoors and as you can see it's very very close. We have to zoom in a little bit. Now let's have a zoom in right here and I can say that this text is looking better on the stock camera app. This is kind of blurry a bit and halo-y let me say. One more shot with skyscrapers and I would say that the color is more pleasing at least to my eye right here on the Google Cam picture. This one is looking a bit over processed. On this shot I also do see that the sky is neutrally grey and it was actually neutrally grey on this scene and here we can see that the phone is adding a little bit of a bluish tint to the sky which is okay probably but I still do prefer more natural look of the Google Cam. And probably you cannot see this but zooming in I can see a bit more noise right here because I'm watching it on iMac 5K screen, full screen, and right here we can see that it's kind of hidden behind the darker shadows and overall better noise reduction. And on this shot, once again, we can see the difference in sky. A bit more magenta on the Google Cam and a bit more bluish cyanish one on stock camera app in the left picture. Those two pictures look almost identical and if you don't zoom in, you wouldn't notice the difference at all. The green grass looks kind of identical, the sky looks very very close, maybe a little bit different tint but it's very close. And now let's zoom in a touch and as you can see uh, right here we have a bit more over sharpening, di digital sharpening let me say. And right here it's looking a bit softer but actually better, at least to my eye. One more shot with a ton of colors and actually I do prefer this more neutral look. It's not uh, too cold. In this picture it looks like uh, the white balance is off and it's too cold and too bluish. And this same thing applies to over sharpening on this picture. It's looking sharper but it's a digital sharpening and this one is looking less sharp but right here I can see a bit of smeary uh, in the bricks and here we can see the bricks perfectly. So it's kind of uh, you know, jumping back and forth between those in terms of sharpness and detail. Now let's jump in into low light scenario with indoors concert. It was very, you know, uh, artificial light and it was changing the color all the time. So it's not the best representation, but overall I can see that both cameras are doing not the best job. Uh, it's looking like painting almost and the Google camera looks worse in this case. But once again, it's not the best um, example. On this shot, I didn't turn on the night mode and this is what we get with the regular mode of the camera, which is... <laughs> as you can see not that cool and with the google cam i did turn on the night mode and as you can see we have a ton of detail we have this tree we have a ton of detail in the building very beautiful by the way and also in terms of sharpness it's doing kind of the same job but in terms of dynamic range is much much better on this night shot i do prefer the color of the google camera and also the sharpness overall it's looking much more pleasing and true to life and especially this magenta color it's kind of burnt out right here in this spot, but it's looking much better right there. This shot is very interesting to be honest. Can you see those flares from the lens? I do see some rays coming out of this light pole, but right here we almost don't see those. So did the Google camera reduce the flaring or remove it uh, digitally? I don't know, but it's so cool. And uh, in terms of sharpness, of course, it's not the best because it's handheld. We see a ton of digital over sharpening right there with this picture. In this one we see less over sharpening, but it's also not looking perfectly well, kind of haloing and ghosting right there. But I really did enjoy that it removed the flare from the lens. One more night shot and from the first glance uh, there is almost no difference. Probably it's more magenta in the sky with the main camera and less magenta in the sky with the Google Cam. And if we zoom in a little bit, we can see that both are doing not the best job. Probably right here we can see a bit more detail with the Google camera and right here as well. Whereas on the main camera, I mean the stock camera app, we don't see those details. They're uh, hidden behind the noise reduction. For some reason with this build of the app, the selfie camera doesn't work. As you can see, I tried to turn it on, it goes white and uh, just <laughs> doesn't work. So I tried to compare the iPhone 13 Pro Max uh, selfie camera with uh, the stock camera app of OnePlus and it doesn't perform well in terms of HDR. As you can see, I had to lower the exposure to keep the highlights and in the next shot I tried to lower, um, I mean raise the exposure to 
uh, properly expose my face and the highlights are almost blown out so the iphone is doing better in this term it looks like it's not enough contrast right here probably it's a fingerprint i'm not sure but all in all the selfie doesn't work in google cam app so that is why i just cannot judge it so guys as you saw the results are pretty similar and it mostly comes down to the amount of saturation digital sharpening and color and to be honest the differences are minor but i enjoyed most of the shots from google camera more and I'm really curious how it stacks up against iPhone 13 Pro Max, which is two times the price of OnePlus 7 Pro. Also, keep in mind that Google Cam app receives a lot of updates frequently and it has a lot of customization inside the app in different modes like night mode, portrait mode and etc. So you'll have a ton of options to play with to find the perfect balance with this app. By the way, that's my cat Motya, and she says nice to meet you. Of course, this app is not perfect and you lose your ultra-wide and telephoto camera options. Also, it's doing a pretty bad job in portrait mode, but don't forget that it's completely free and it's always fun to play around with to get some better results with the same hardware of your smartphone. I highly recommend to play around with it and to try it out yourself because your mileage may vary depending on the phone and the app version you have. If you did enjoy this video, feel free to smash the like and subscribe buttons as I say my videos and hit the notifications bell. Here are a couple of videos for you to watch next. My name is Alek Nikitin, no limits on channel and I see you guys in the next video. Take care, bye.